Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. I remember the first time I had a taste of Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. It was back in 1996, or November of 1996 to be more precise. It was early in the month, and the postman had left my video game magazine Megascore, for which I had a monthly subscription in the mail, and it was time to unwrap it. Since October of that same year, the magazine also included a demo disc, so this was disc number two only, and I looked at it, and there it was. A gargoyle with the inscription, Broken Sword. I was like, okay, look at all these cool demos I have to play. But under those two words, I've also read The Shadow of the Templars. Being passionate about history all my life and with religion, more specifically religion as a social construct throughout time and all its mysteries, I was super hyped. So in goes the CD into my Pentium 1 and voila, I heard the words Paris in the fall. Bingo! History, religion, the Knights Templars, and in Paris. Everything was aligned for perfection. Introducing Broken Sword, the Shadow of the Templars, also known as Circle of Blood for those in the US. Developed by Revolution Software, creators of games like Lure of the Tempers and Beneath the Steel Sky, and published by Version Interactive in October of 1996 for PCs. Looking at the box, we have this amazing cover where a dude stares at you. This is the most famous cover and not only is it cool, it is also a bit menacing, revealing some elements present in the game without giving anything away. I mean, uh, look at the North American artwork, which looks like it came out of the Gargoyles animated series. It also lets you know that a book about the Knights Templars is included. Things just keep getting better and better. The back of the box has back of the box things like uh, screenshots of the game and uh, words. New breed, savage, gothic, Templar Knights, answer the call to action. Looking inside the box we have the game on two lovely circular pieces of plastic and more menacing eyes inside the, the jewel case. And we also have a small book by Steve Jackson entitled Savage Warriors on a short take through the story of the Knights Templars. I absolutely recommend this small read about the foundation, rise and fall of one of the most secretive organizations in human history. Broken Sword the Shadow of the Templars starts off immediately when you hear the words Paris in the Fall. There's no menu or options, nope. You start the game, you're in the game. Simple. As any decent adventure game from that time, Broken Sword the Shadow of the Templars assumes the form of a third-person, point-and-click adventure game. This meaning that the game is very simple to play. You point and you click on things like objects, characters and dialogue options. No need to reinvent the wheel. After a brief introduction with a overview of Paris, a clown and an explosion, our adventure starts when George Stobart, an American tourist in Paris, is almost killed by that same explosion, triggered of course by the clown. Our main protagonist, George, then has a true American, decides, for some reason, to find the killer clown and bring him to justice. But although George didn't even knew the victim of this attack, he simply decides to find his killer, and I'm glad he did because the rabbit hole goes deep. For those who have never played the game, I'll be showing footage of the demo only. As a true adventure game, the deal is the same as others. Find objects and clues, use the objects to solve puzzles, open new areas with new puzzles, and interact with the environment and the NPCs. But the thing that got me hooked to Broken Sword in seconds were the very intuitive and easy to use control system, where the mouse icon changes when it's over an odd spot, and you will simply have to left click for George to interact with it, or right click to inspect it. Never again! How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? 
George Stobart, ma'am. Some may say that this makes the game easier, and in some way I have to agree. When you move the mouse cursor through the various beautiful screens, the cursor changes when something is found and an interaction is available. Not only that, the cursor shows which action can be performed, like uh, picking something shows a hand, move an object shows a couple of gears, or uh, looking shows an eye. Again, this can either be seen as uh, intuitive gameplay or uh, gameplay made easy. Another thing that I noticed right away is the depth of interaction with the NPCs and the well-written dialogue. During interactions you have two bars on screen, one at the bottom with icons representing the subjects you can discuss and another at the top with the inventory with the objects you can show them. I clearly remember the first time I heard Sergeant Mu ordering George to stop while he answers, I'm innocent, I'm an American, to which Mu replies, can't make up your mind. You can't make this stuff up. And yes, the game's dialogue is filled with humor in the right moments. Hold it, right there. Whoa, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Another great thing that got me hooked are the graphics, which are uh, all very well designed and colorful, and the superb animation that looks directly taken from animated shows and movies. The cartoon style design may put some of those photorealism aficionados off, but don't let it fool you, this game is definitely not for young kids. The deep and mysterious plot is designed to be thought-provoking and highly entertaining at the same time. The animation is extremely colorful and well executed that, at some point, it feels like you're looking at a painting. It is both elegant and mature. The screens are detailed and inviting. The score is also ambitious and beautiful. It has a very cinematic feel to the whole experience. Hi there. Hold it right there. You, you swear right. <laughs> I knew you would come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? As George travels from country to country, you are greeted with music that complements the scenery and really draws you in. This makes the concept of George traveling to another country much more convincing as music takes on a big role in culture and it truly makes you feel like you're in a foreign country. But back to the graphic adventure elements. What makes a great adventure? The plot, the journey of course. And do these two shine in Broken Sword? A story that looks like a modern-day Indiana Jones adventure and the complex and colorful characters you will encounter throughout the game are nothing short of memorable. All the characters are very well written and complex and this comes even more to life due to the excellent voiceover work with all the accents in place. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me but the explosion was to change my life forever. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed 1345. One of these characters is Nicole Collard, a streetwise, forthright and sarcastic photojournalist that helps George throughout the game. Now let's talk about puzzles. Every adventure game has puzzles and the ones in Shadow of the Templars are not only clever ones, but also not too overwhelming. Aside, of course, from the most hated goat in computer history. Yes, the infamous goat puzzle, where no hints are given to the player and the solution is, let's say, somewhat counterintuitive. A thing which has been fixed in the director's cut version. 
That being said, while George is traveling from country to country in persecution of information on one of the most secret societies ever, this makes for a long game with a large scope and areas to explore. But believe me when I say, every minute is worth it. In 2009, a remastered version called Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars, Director's Cut was released. Ported for Windows PCs in 2010, the Director's Cut not only improves the graphics, sounds and resolution, but it also has new sections in which you now play as Nico. These expand the background story a little and fleshes out Nico a lot more, making her an even more interesting and complex character, taking more parts in the overall gameplay. Oh, and by the way, you can play Bong during the game installation. What else could someone want? After all that, the only three words I can leave you with are What an adventure! In a world dominated by LucasArts and Sierra greatness, comes a true masterpiece and adventure gaming at its absolute finest. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. No computer adventurer should let this one pass by. If you haven't experienced Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars, drop whatever it is you are playing and immediately push this one to the top of your list. You can grab the Director's Cut version which comes bundled with the original from Steam or GOG and travel the world in pursuit of uh, ancient modern mysteries. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. I found this newspaper outside the cafe. That is not a newspaper, it's a gossip rag. It may have belonged to Plantar. So? He had a taste for sensationally smut with right-wing bias. That doesn't tell us much. There's something written in it. Salah ed 1345. It sounds like a banking chip. The name of the horse and the time of the race. And you know what else doesn't disappoint? The other videos that I have in this same channel, so check those out if you will. Leave a like in this one and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because your support is always very much appreciated. As always, thank you very much for watching this and until my next video, please take care.